The number of people living in the Asheville area has jumped almost 20 percent in the last decade. And every year, millions of tourists come to the nearby mountains and forests for rest and recreation. But as Dr. Tom Linden reports, what awaits them may be surprising. Glorious views, cascading waterfalls, rich mountain culture, and age-old traditions. Western North Carolina residents like Bruce O'Connell consider themselves lucky to call the Blue Ridge Mountains home. But many residents and millions of tourists who visit these mountains each year don't realize that air pollution is destroying these cherished vistas and making them sick. Deepest breath. Now, blah, 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 blah. Keep squeezing, squeeze, 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 squeeze. squeeze. Seven-year-old Jeffrey Robertson has asthma. On days when air pollution clouds the view from his home in Murphy, Jeffrey can't play outside. His mother, Rhonda Robertson, says dirty air makes it harder for Jeffrey to breathe. As long as he's not running or exerting himself to breathe hard, he does okay. But if he does that, then he has trouble with his breathing. He, he bends over, gasping for breath at times. Nice deep one. Three of the seven boys on Jeffrey's basketball team have asthma. This year, Jeffrey's asthma got so bad, he had to quit. Jeffrey's father, Shane Robertson, coaches the team. About every one of them is on a uh, breathing treatment, but <clears throat> they run about one lap and that's it. That's all they can handle and then they have to walk. Officials at Mission St. Joseph's Hospital in Asheville say Western North Carolina residents have among the longest life expectancies statewide. But for deaths caused by non-smoking related breathing problems, Asheville ranks highest in the state. An Environmental Protection Agency endorsed study completed in October 2000 by the National Clean Air Task Force link this high death rate to power plant pollution. That same study ranked Asheville sixth in the nation for air pollution related respiratory deaths. Hospital Administrator John Ashley says he's concerned. When people have lung disease, we can't very well, in fact it's impossible to tell them to not breathe the air. So we ba badly need to increase the quality of air in this community. A study by an Asheville based environmental group also completed in 2000 found the number of respiratory related emergency room visits rose about 50 percent on days immediately following unhealthy ozone days. Ozone forms when nitrogen oxides from car exhaust and coal burning power plants react with chemicals naturally released from trees. Mission St. Joseph's Hospital is adding intensive care space to deal with the increase in respiratory illnesses. We'd like, frankly, like nothing more than for the, the air to be improved and for people not to require those intensive care beds, but I'm afraid if it's not, those intensive care beds are going to be filled with some very sick people. But environmental advocates say the air is not getting better. That's bad news for human and environmental health says Appalachian Voices co-founder and chairman, Harvard Ayers. I say the air quality near Asheville and in the southwestern part of North Carolina is probably the worst in the country. Winds blowing into the southern Appalachian Mountains carry tiny particles from southeastern cities and coal-burning power plants in the Ohio River and Tennessee Valleys. Mountain peaks trap the pollutants and moisture in the air causes the pollution particles to obscure views. The Tennessee Valley Authority and Duke Power Plants have complied with the 1990 Clean Air Act, which required large plants to reduce emissions by 40 percent. But 40 percent is only half of what's needed to clear the air, say environmental experts. And many old power plants don't have to meet these regulations because legislators believe they would close before the 1990s. Air resource specialist Bill Jackson monitors air pollution in the mountains of western North Carolina. We are sampling ground level ozone and we have measurements every hour for that and also the stacks that you see out coming out of the roof is where we're actually monitoring fine particles. The most common fine particle that we have is sulfates. Jackson says sulfates come from sulfur dioxide 
released into the air when power plants burn coal. These particles cause haze by scattering light. He says sulfates also fall to the ground, leaching important nutrients out of the soil and making plants and aquatic life sick. Just west of the Blue Ridge Mountains is Great Smoky Mountain National Park, which attracts more than 10 million visitors each year, making it the most popular national park in the country. And it has the most polluted air, according to the National Park Service. Two decades ago, visitors enjoyed almost 100-mile views. Now, views shrink to only one mile when the air is dirty. Air pollution causes declining visibility throughout the region. These are the Black Mountains in the Blue Ridge chain on a pristine day. You could see about 50 miles. Compare that to a computer-generated view of the same spot when the air is polluted. In the wintertime and in the spring and in the fall, when we have a good clear air day, you can see all the way to South Carolina. The furthest ridge of mountains is the South Carolina border. 20 years ago, you could see it all the time. Even in the summer, it was beautiful. It was green. Nowadays, when the summer comes, the haze comes with it, and you're lucky to be able to see the first ridge of mountains. Western North Carolina's mountains and forests attract more than 12 million visitors each year, and that number would be even higher with clean air. A recent study showed that if the air here were as clean as it was just two decades ago, North Carolina's sales revenues would jump almost 300 million dollars. Tourism is our number one industry. It's very important. Asheville Mayor Lenny Sitnik has made improving the city's air a top concern. Number one, if you're asking me to prioritize, is the health of the people of this community and beyond. Cleaning up Western North Carolina's air may not be as difficult or as costly as one might expect. An EPA study estimates that reducing pollution emissions enough to restore air quality in the area would add only about $1.40 a month to an average household's electric bill. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. And so we hope to see more alliances so we can all work together to a common outcome here, which is clean air, healthy air, fresh air, and air for the long term. To clean the air in western North Carolina, state lawmakers are working on a bill that would sharply reduce power plant emissions. The so-called Clean Smoke Snacks bill would force the two biggest state power companies to install state-of-the-art scrubbers and chemical filters in all 14 of their plants. The legislation has passed the Senate but has stalled in the House as lawmakers debate the cost of the measures.